good morning students hope you are all fine today we will see chapter 3 fiber to fabric in grade 7 science ncert book children you have variety of dresses in your cupboard each of your dresses are made of same fabric just think each of your dresses are made of same fabric no they are made of different kinds of fabric like cotton wool silk polyester or some common fabric and what is fabric made of and what is fabric made of fabrics made of fine threads called yarn fabrics made of fine threads called yarn from your fiber fabric you can easily pull out yarn see this picture from the from that fiber easily pull out yarn if you untwist untwist yarn to loosen it you will find number of thin hair like structure when we are untwist yarn to loosen it we will find number of thin hair like structure these strands are called fiber these fine strands are called or thin strands are called fiber have you ever tried to thread a needle sometime the end of the thread separated into few thin strands like this they few thin strands these thin strands are called fiber fibers are thread like structure fibers are thread like structure when fibers are twisted to make thicker and stronger thread when fibers are twisted it's become thicker and stronger thread that is called yarn when we are twisting the fiber it's become strong and thicker it's called as a yarn students if you have a cotton in your home just take some amount of cotton and stretch it and twist them it's become stronger and thicker yarn this 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 process of making yarn from fiber is called spinning this process of making yarn from fiber is called spinning how we are making yarn from fiber by twisting them by joining fibers and twisting them it's become a yarn when we are when we are interlock the yarn it's become a fabric the interlock interlocking structure of fiber or yarn we call it as a fabric the yarn is interwoven to form piece of fabric the yarn is interwoven to form piece of fabric yarn obtained from fiber fabric obtained from yarn yarn obtained from fiber fabric obtained from yarn fibers are thread like structure we already learned let's go to the lesson how fibers are obtained fibers are obtained from their sources fibers are obtained from their sources then what are the sources and where does it come from there are two types of sources one from nature and another one from man made sources one from natural source nature and then another one from man made source on the basic of sources fibers are classified into two types nat one is a natural fiber another one is a man made or synthetic fiber natural fibers are obtained from plants and 
animal. Nowadays, natural fiber production less and high cost. So we need another source that is synthetic fiber. Synthetic fibers are not obtained from nature. Synthetic fibers are not obtained from nature. So we cannot get the, get them from nature. They're, so we cannot get these fibers from nature. Technological innovation and chemical treatment made it possible to construct fibers. Technological innovation and chemical treatments made it possible to construct fibers. Such fibers are called synthetic fiber or man-made fiber or artificial fiber. So simply we can define man-made fiber or synthetic fibers obtained from chemicals. For example, nylon, polyester, acrylic, rayon, these are the examples for artificial fiber. Now we are going to see about rayon. See this picture. How this fabric looks. It's give a shiny appearance. It's give a shiny appearance like a silk. It's look like a silk. This appearance or look like a silk. So this rayon we call it as a artificial silk. Rayon is also called as a artificial silk. It does not obtain from naturally. That's not obtain from naturally. It is a man-made fiber. We can produce more rayons in labs. Nowadays, silks are very expensive. So, it's not possible to buy all kinds of people. So, it's available, this rayon is available in low cost compared with natural silk. So, that's why it's called it as a artificial silk. Why it's called it as an artificial silk mean? It's appearance or look like a silk. It's give a shiny appearance like a natural silk. Next, nylon. Nylon is a strong, flexible and which is used to make ropes. Mostly, nylons are used to make rope. In our home, most of us drying our clothes under sunlight on ropes. These kind of ropes made up of nylon. That ropes are best example for nylon products. In our daily life, we are using these nylon ropes. Next, we will discuss about natural fiber. Natural fibers are obtained from nature. Natural fibers are obtained from plants and animals. For example, cotton, hemp, jute, flax. These fibers are obtained from plants. This is a summer season. In this season, mostly we are refer the uh, refer the cotton cloth because it's keep as cool. So it's uh, very important that one is obtained from plants. We are getting. We are mostly like to wear cotton fabrics. They are obtained from plants. And nowadays, linen fabrics are very famous. These fibers are obtained from flax plant. And another one fiber is animal fiber. Animal fibers are obtained from animal. See this picture. What are the animal fibers? Wool and silk. Wool is obtained from fleece of sheep, hair of rabbit and yolk. This kind of animals is wool. Silk is an example of animal fiber. 
Then it is an example of animal fiber. How? Because it's obtained from silk comb. Silk obtained from silk comb. So that is called it as a animal fiber. Now we are talked about wool. First we see sources of wool. From where do we get wool? Wool is obtained from animals. See this picture. These are the animals are called wool yielding animals. Do you know from which part of the animal do we get wool? Yes. Wool is obtained from hair of animals. Wool is obtained from hair of animals. Hair means what? Yeah. Lot of animals which have hair all over their body. Lot of animals which have hair all over their body. Like human being. We also have hair. So we have a hair on our head. And other than that we have a body hair. Right. We have a body hair. Like that. These animals also have hair all over their body. You look at the sheep. It has fur like structure all over their body. In this picture we can see this wool. Uh, this sheep have a wool all over the body or else hair all over the body. It is give a fur like structure. That kind of hair called wool. This kind of hair called as a wool. This wool keep them warm. This wool keep them warm. So this kind of wool yielding animals live in cold region. This kind of wool yielding animals live in cold region. So this wool or help them to keep their body warm. Hair on their animal's body along with thin layer of skin taken out. See here one person collecting wool from the sheep. So he is collecting wool along with the thin layer of skin. So they, this hair along with skin we called as a fleece. This hair, this wool along with the thin layer of skin we called as a fleece. Students, is there, is this hurt animals? Do you have any idea about this? No, it does not hurt animals and does not harm the animals. Topmost layer of, layer of skin made up of dead cells topmost layer of skin made up of dead cells even it remove it does not hurt them so the the wool along with the thin layer the thin layer made up of dead cells so it's not hurt them hurt them do you know why it hurts when someone pulls our hair when someone pulls our hair, it's hurt us. Do you know the reason? Yes. When pulls hair, it hurts because root of our hair is connected to the skin which has sensation. So that skins are that that skins have a living cells. Living cells has sensation. So when they are pulling at that time we will get hurt because the hair is connected to the skin. And then but when they are cut the hair he does not get hurt. Do you know the reason? Because during hair cut the Tip of the hair is cut, which is dead cells. Hair is made up of dead cells and does not have any sensation. So dead cells does not have any sensation. So we does not hate, does not, doesn't get home.
or else doesn't hurt us. Students, do you know why wool yielding animals have thick coat of hair? Why will wool yielding animals have thick coat of hair? A thick coat of hair helps in trapping a lot of air. See, this thick coat of hair tra helps in trapping air. So, in, in between these air, they have a space. In that space, airs are trapped. Trapped means catched or catched. So, the air is a poor conductor. We already know. So, it does not allow heat from one place to another. Air does not allow heat from one place to another. So, it keeps the animal warm. So, it keeps the animal warm. And it prevents heat come out from the body. Air prevents the heat come out from the body. This is a reason why we are using sweater in winter season. So, sweaters are made up of wool. Wool is thick and has space in it. So, in this space, air can be trapped. Air is a poor conductor. We already know. So, this air prevent heat coming out from our body. So, air prevent heat from coming out from our body and we are getting two types of wool from wool yielding animals first one is the coarse beard hair and second one is the fine and soft under hair the the coarse hair they are rough and strong that hairs are very rough and strong it's used to make rugs, carpets and blankets. Next one is a fine and soft under hair which is found close to the skin which is used to make clothes. That fine under hairs are mostly used to make clothes. Now let us talk about some of the wool yielding animals. Some of the wool yielding animals. The most common wool yielding animal is sheep. So if someone asking list out the some wool yielding animals means in our mind first comes sheep only is it. So mostly sheep can produce different kinds of wool. Most common wool yielding animal is sheep. Sheep can produce different kinds of wool like coarse wool and fine and soft wool not only sheep some goats can yield different variety of wool see this is a kashmiri goat it's found in kashmir region from this goat we are getting pashmina wool so this pashmina salts which are very popular from kashmir so, this Kashmiri goat yield pashmina wool. And pashmina wools are very soft and also very warm. The pashmina wools are very soft and also very warm. So, it has both advantage. So, it's a, uh, it's, it's used to make shawls. And Apart from this Kashmiri goat, Angoro goat also yielding wool. The Angoro goat, from the Angoro goat, we get other type of wool called as a mohair. From the Angoro goat, we are getting wool is called as a mohair. Kashmiri, from the Kashmiri goat, we are getting pasmina wool. And Angoro goat we are get from Angoro goat we are getting mohai wool. So this is an Angoro goat. It yield the yielding the mohai wool. Next, this one is a llama, is very common in South Africa. 
we cannot find this kind of animal in our country it's very common in south america it's look like a camel they also produce coarse beard wool they also produce coarse wool it's very hard and coarse you this wool these wools are used for rugs and rope used for making rugs and ropes some other camels also yielding wool next this one is a angora rabbit this one also yielding wool this we are getting a angora wool from angora rabbit but angora goat yielding the mohair wool we are getting mohair wool from the angora goat but here angora rabbit yielding angora wool apart from these animals some yaks also produce wool so students today we learned uh, learned types of fiber and uh, natural fibers man made fiber and then uh, wool yielding animals and wool about wool remaining topics we will see in next class thank you stay home stay safe